Oh. And what's this? Some young blood come to my table. You want to know the secret to be a great adventurer? You don't have the. Very well. I shall tell you my secret. I'm sure you have some group of great adventurers who you travel with and slay evil with. Well, have you considered if there's something to happen to them? You would get their share of the loot. I'm not suggesting anything. But if a monster was to kill them, you would get the loot. I'm not, but, and the glory is the thing. Uh, so if there was a fire in the inn, I'm not, and, and you weren't there, not suggesting it, or drown them in a lake. Uh, it's basically trickle down economics. Have you considered that man is the real monster? Is the other thing. Wait, where are you going? I've got more to teach you about being a hero! Alright, let's talk about a game. Let's talk about a card game. Let's talk about a good card game. Let's talk about a very good, very fun, very funny card game. Cutthroat Caverns is a bit of an institution at this point. It's got many expansions, including one big box that came out a couple of years ago that fits everything into it in a big lovely inlay that's custom made. Oh, but I appreciate some of you might not be driven into a fervour like me by the possibility of buying lots of boxes and taking things out of them and putting everything into one big box uh, and throwing the original boxes away. So let's just talk about the base game to begin with, which is a lovely comedy of errors by itself and a fine purchase. So, in Cutthroat Caverns, three to six players are all adventurers working their way through a dungeon together, which is the concept of every board game ever. Wait. So you're gonna be fighting monsters from a big deck of monsters, and they might be normal monsters like a minotaur, or funny monsters like a gas bag, or horrible things like the concept of fear. And here's how many life points they have. But here is how much respect your character gets for landing the killing blow. And at the end of a game of Cutthroat Caverns, the player with the most respect is the winner. So what we've got here is a semi-cooperative game. You have to work together. I've bagged my cards because I'm OCD. You have to work together to get through the dungeon safely. But if one player dies, maybe that's not the end of the world if they would have otherwise won. So yeah, a very interesting puzzle. And here's how that works. Or rather, how it doesn't work, but that's okay because it's meant to work. But here's, it doesn't, it works because it doesn't work. It, do, no, uh, it doesn't work. And that works because... Here's what you're going to see when you sit down to a three-player game of Cutthroat Caverns. First things first, you're going to see your character. In this case, it's Nephedra. In her bio, it says she trusts no one, which is probably... Not great, but then you look and all the characters trust no one, and that's a really nice touch. Other things you're going to see include this random deck of ten monsters, no idea what they're going to be, and this enormous deck of cards from which you're going to deal seven to yourself. So, ooh, the feature's got a potion, that's good. Another player can steal that, because that's what you do in Cutthroat Caverns. Now, the first monster you might see is Axe, and then you're going to see your initiative card, which is secret, and it tells you you're number two. Now, Axe has 100 health, and you're going to hit him second. So you look at your attack cards and you wonder what you're going to put down. You could deal 50 damage, but if the first player doesn't put much down, then that's not going to kill him either, and you're going to let the third player land the killing blow. This is the game. So you decide to focus strength, which is going to double the damage you do next round, and see what the other players do. And then you all reveal your cards, and it turns out you're the only player who didn't hit him hard because the other two were just trying to kill him. They start making fun of you. Axe then hits all three of you for 20 damage, and all the other players are going, why are you a jerk? Why, why didn't you help us out? And you're saying, I'm sorry, I thought, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, this weird and slightly intense puzzle is the base game of Cutthroat Caverns. You're playing this weird mathsy game where you want your attacks to get the last hits, you want to get the timing right. But you're also playing the table because if you get too many last hits or you're too much of a jerk or both then you're going to find yourself subject to all the horrible cards at the table from everyone else from my hero which has you taking damage on behalf of someone else to having your action cards get cancelled to just players not wanting to use their potions of healing on you any one of which might get you killed so you want to stay people's friend until the last second it's very very odd so does it work as a game that's what shut up and sit down wants to know right well in this case, 
We don't. It's a good game. I don't know quite how robust it is. I haven't played this, you know, the ten times it would take to find that out. But it doesn't matter. Because same as if you bought a used car and found diamonds in the glove compartment, Cutthroat Caverns' game is kind of made irrelevant by its monsters. So you might be feeling a little cocksure, a little confident, you're gonna kill your friends, it's gonna be great. Well, here's the thing. Every round, Cutthroat Caverns introduces a new monster that's like a total curveball every single time. These are kind of nice surprises, but I'm gonna spoil four of them just to get my point across. You're not going to be expecting the riddle room when it happens to you and neither were your friends. This makes you put all of your hands in a grid and play a kind of memorization game, flipping cards to avoid traps? Yeah. What about, uh, what about boogans? Suddenly everyone has their own goblins to fight, individual boogans. What if, uh, what if you found a mind grub, right? And the mind grub, the player who damages it the least, can redirect the damage it deals them to another player if they choose, meaning you can sort of pretend to be infected and hurt other people, but then it lasts forever and suddenly the party is dying? Or what about a blood mage? Every single round that you leave the blood mage alive, it puts another monster in the game, adds another round to the game, and reduces your chance of ever getting out of the dungeon alive. Which might be fine if you're feeling healthier than any of your friends. Now, while I'm sure you're all reeling from the phrase individual boogans, let's look at this from a slightly more smart perspective, okay? What this monster thing does isn't just add variety to cutthroat caverns, it forces players to react rather than scheme. It forces them to make hilarious mistakes as they figure out how to defeat a shift, which gets tougher as you leave it. It forces players to, to display anger or dismay or thrill at everything you find in every room. In short, like the highly interpersonal last hitting game you're playing, Cutthroat Caverns gives you the tools required to enjoy the company of your friends, and any game that does that is likely to be a shut up and sit down favourite, and Cutthroat Caverns does it with a plum. <laughs> which, is, which is totally one of those words where I think I know what it means, but might not actually know what it means, so let's go look it up. Uh, a plum. Great coolness and composure under strain. Kinda works? <laughs> anyway. I love this game. I love it. There's no classic mid-review turnaround coming. I just love it that there are a couple of things you might consider problems, starting with this. Okay, I see what's happening here. We've got a kind of cartoony fantasy art style. That's good. It's nice. Let's see what's the next monster. Ooh, ooh. Wait, there's... Okay, first off, I thought this was fun, and second off, I'm pretty sure that's not hate, and I think I've seen one of these before, when Matt stays over and uses my shower. Oh, oh, oh god, I thought we were having fun. What is, he's got arms, and like, oh, and what's the, oh, and the, oh. Well, that's, that's just kind of shit. So, yeah, if you're into board gaming for its aesthetics, then probably invest in something more pleasing, uh, like an enema. The other problem with Cutthroat Caverns is that usually the best player probably won't win because they're going to be dead because the game's kind of a crapshoot and because the last monsters are worth so much more prestige and they do that to keep the game tense. But it does mean that consistency is less important than getting that last monster. Um, which might be difficult if you have a rival. It leads to bizarre things where actually I've seen more often than not the player who's the least of a dick wins this game called Cutthroat Caverns. Um, which I'm fine with, because in a sense it makes a funny monster even funnier. And also because I'm usually dead. Because I set someone on fire and the group killed me. Um, yeah, so no problems with any of that anyway, let's look at some expansions. Okay, so what we've got here are tombs and tomes and relics and ruin, and each one of them adds just tons of more stuff to the game, like monsters and new relics and tokens and runes and all kinds of good stuff. And that's kind of all you need to know, basically, because like Shut Up and Sit Down Favourite Cosmic Encounter, this is a game powered by its variety, and what that means is more variety is just gonna make the game better. I can tell you that these expansions are even more inventive than the base set, but that's all I want to say, because anything else would be a spoiler. Okay, go on then, I'll, I'll, t I'll show one thing to you. One thing from the expansions, and that'll prove why you need them. Okay, okay. Right, where is he, where is he? Where, that's the wrong deck. 
Where is he? 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 Yay! Okay, this this is the werebor. And the werebor is played with a deck of cards that say, Are you a werebor? And if the werebor hits you, you get one of these cards and you keep it. And then at the end of the game, when you leave the dungeon, you look at your card and you find out if you're a werebor. And you're not. But maybe one of you is a werebor. And then you have to fight another werebor as that player dies immediately. And of course you're fighting another werebor, so it hits you and you find out, are you a werebor? And you, you're not. But maybe another, no, maybe another player is and you fight another. It's just, just, it's just brilliant. There's your review. That's just so fun and funny and interesting and brilliant. There's your review. So that is from uh, Relics and Ruin, but if you'd rather buy Tombs and Tomes, you can get this, an adventure module. In fact, a double-sided adventure module, two adventures that act as kind of a games master, threading your encounters together in a story. You're the two passageways still loom before you. The more learned of your group seems to be eyeing the inscriptions. It's good, it's full of ideas and weird twists, elevating the game further. A game designer friend of mine did point out that it is disgusting how much content Cutthroat Caverns gets out of what's basically a two minute rules explanation. A simple game that just keeps surprising you. So by way of conclusion, it was pointed out to me recently that Shut Up and Sit Down does have one sliver of bias in the games we cover, which is that we always are more favorable towards games that make you laugh. To which I say, mea culpa. There you go. An acknowledgement of your error or guilt. Two for two. Anyway, this is a really good example of that bias. I don't care that Cutthroat Caverns has player elimination. I don't care that the best player will rarely win because it's joyous. And if you agree with me and you're willing to fork out the extra money for the expansions to get the most out of this game, shut up and sit down. Absolute, what's, oh, that was bad tea absolutely recommends Cutthroat Caverns. That burp has totally thrown me off. The one thing I don't like about it is just the fact that it's not set in a cavern. Uh, they just did this for the alliteration. Alliterate. Siri, define alliteration. Same letter will sound at the beginning of a series of stressed syllables in a line of verse. Amazing. Who are you talking to in there? Uh, no one. I, uh, I'm ma masturbating. I'm masturbating. You're the one I love. Today's tip is, uh, it's anonymous tip, uh, and it's, t anonymous tip is, it's no credits and it lets you draw three cards, which in my opinion makes it the best tip in all of Netrunner. Um, might be the only tip, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll work that one out, you can come back next week.